So on page 19, you're going to types of solutions to quadratic equations. So we're on types of solutions to quadratic equations. We're going to divide the whole page into four boxes. More four boxes? More four boxes. I'm teaching you how to organize your notes. Because I've seen some of your notes and they're questionable. If I can read them. <laughs> yeah. There are some that we can't read and we have no clue what they're writing or where they started or where their notes even end. You know who you are. I mean, do I know myself? Are you ready? Title and four and two lines with all math and four. That's so complicated. So complicated. You draw. What's important is in the red. Y'all hear me? What is important is in the red. Okay? So, we're talking about the discriminant. B squared minus 4AC. Does that sound familiar? Yes. Who said no? It should, because we spent all day yesterday using it. Um, the discriminant is just with underneath the radical. And what today's focus is using that value to determine the types of solutions we have. Okay? So, if the value is greater than zero, well, what kind of numbers are greater than zero? Most numbers. Positive numbers. Positive numbers. That's what I was looking for. Greater than zero are positive numbers. So, if I get a positive discriminant, that means I have two real solutions. See it? If I'm equal to zero, that means I have one real solution. And if I'm less than zero, which are what numbers? Negative numbers. Negative numbers then there are no real solutions but two imaginary. imaginary solutions, okay? That's our main takeaway. And again, the discriminant is what's underneath our radical in the quadratic formula. So positive discriminant means what again? The positive means that there's two real solutions. Two real solutions. Equal to zero means? One real solution. One real solution. And less than zero means? No real solution. No real solution but? Imaginary. Imaginary, okay? That's your three big ideas for box one. So however you choose right now, those are your three big ideas. Oh no. I know. And you're gonna see how super duper duper easy today is gonna be. Because today, unlike yesterday when we were doing full on solving for the solutions, Today, you're just telling me how many do I have. Wait. So, that's. So, if it's bigger than the, all we just do is like tell you that it's. Two rooms. Wow. That's it. Today's even easier. I'm positive. Okay. All right. Ready? So, again, what was our, our main part? The main thing you should be writing. Is this? That, that's the focus right there. That's all we're worried about. When do I get two real? When do I get one real? When do I get two imaginaries? Okay? Right. Got it? All right, so we're ready for box two. Box two. Here's your example. We're going to find the discriminant and determine the number of real solutions. So we have negative 2x squared minus 3x plus 5. Here we go. Negative 2x squared minus 3x plus 5. It's in equal to 0, so now I can start off my discriminant. I'm going to change the color to white. So that we can see it. So again, what does the discriminant mean? It's my b squared minus 4ac. I'm in standard form, so this value is my a, this value is my b, and this value is my c. And I'm just going to go through and plug them in. So we have negative 3 squared minus 4 times negative 2 times 5. Are we comfortable with plugging in? Yeah? Okay. yeah? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to evaluate. Negative 3 <coughs> squared gives me what? 
9, negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8 times 5 is 40. So my ending discriminant value is 49. 49 is greater than 0. So what types of solutions do I have? My answer is two real solutions. Bam. Okay, and why is it two real? Because it's greater than zero. Yes? Was that doable? Definitely. Okay? This would be fine, right? How I wrote it? Yeah, isn't that how we wrote it? Oh, right. I couldn't see. Oh. I was like, Roberta, did you write something special? All right, are you ready to do yours? So in box three, you're going to do your own example. And here it goes. So you have 2x squared minus 3x plus 7 equals 0. Find the discriminant and determine the number of solutions. Find the discriminant and determine the number of solutions. talk to each other, you can check with each other, or if you're like super confident, like I don't need y'all, then keep doing you. Do. Negative 47, which is less than zero. zero. So that means what? Two I have two imaginary. No. Oh. Or no real, as long as you know it means imaginary. I don't think I have enough room to write the word about. Oh, we're going to make it. Yes? How do you feel about identifying? I feel great. We don't have to find out what's imaginary. Uh-uh. Unless it tells you what, what are your solutions, then you just stop. The future is going to Yes, tomorrow we're going to actually work on finding two imaginaries. Oh, you're so smart, Destiny. So smart. Okay. All right, good? Easy? Okay. So, um, box two and box three are just using discriminant. Now, box four is our real world example. Okay. And it's, it's not using the discriminant necessarily. We are actually using the other part of our quadratic equation. So we are full of quadratics is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2x, right? Yes? Yeah. So what we talked about is we just finished using the discriminant, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the outside part, that negative b over 2a, does anyone remember what that helped us find in December? See, let's challenge your brain. Anyone remembers what that helped us find in these numbers? C, what was it? X, A, B, what? <laughs> yeah, what did the negative B over 2A help us find in these numbers? Oh. It's your vertex. 
Oh, hey, for, for, for it's vertex. Our vertex. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the negative b over two a helped us find our vertex. Okay. So we are basically saying that the quadratic formula is exists because people realize that there's a relationship between every single piece of the quadratic formula. Okay. So the discriminant is telling me what types of solutions I have. And then the outside is telling me what, what my vertex is, okay? So what we're using for this problem is the outside of the quadratic formula. We're using the negative b over 2a. And that's because if we read through the problem, you're hitting a golf ball that's on a tee, it's about one inch off the ground, and you're looking for its vertical velocity, right? So it's going 85 feet per second, and it tells you that you have this equation that's going to skyrocket it to like, right? Your ball's gonna land somewhere over here. Here's your T, here's your ball, right? And it wants to know, does your ball reach 115 feet? Am I gonna get to 115 feet? Is what it's asking me. So if I'm looking for that, this is the what of my graph? Vertex. The vertex. Right? And so I'm using the outside of the quadratic formula. I'm looking for X equals negative B over Two A. Okay. Once I find that value, remember to find the y values. You just plug it back in. So I find it, plug it in, and that's my answer. And then we decide: is it at one fifteen? Is it greater than one fifteen? Is it lower than one fifteen? If it's greater than one fifteen, at some point I will hit one hundred and fifteen, right? But if it's less than one fifteen, will I ever touch it? No. No. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. That's option number one, is going back to our previous knowledge and using the vertex. Option number two is now um, setting this equal to 115 and determining if I actually exist between there, okay? And so our option number two is now saying I have 115 is my ideal height. Will I get there? And now I can use a discriminant. But in order to use a discriminant, what does this need to be equal to? To zero. So how can I make this equal to zero? Subtracting the 115. Let's go over how to subtract in the calculator with the real world problem. So you're still going to be negative 16 t squared, and you're still going to be 85 t. So I'm going to pull out my little basic calculator. Here he is, bam. So, pin dots. Remember, a fraction is just a division problem, right? So I'm going to do 1 divided by 12 minus 115. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm typing in the calculator. 1 divided by 12 minus 115. It's going to tell me what my new C value is. So we have 1 divided by 12 minus 115. And we get negative 14.917. So minus 1, 14.917. Yes. Now. Yes. <coughs> yes, sir. All right. Are we good? Comfortable? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So that I don't have to go back to previous knowledge from December. This guy right here, right? We're going to use what we're working with now. Could I go back to December? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. But did we even remember this? No. 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 So we're not. <laughs> we're going to try to avoid going back to December. Now I can just use my discriminant. If I get two real solutions, then it's doable. If I get two imaginaries, then it's not doable. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. So now we can do our discriminant and see is it going to work or is it not going to work. So here, discriminant again is b squared minus 4ac. What is my b? 85. What is my a? Negative 16. Right. And my c is? Negative 114.917. Okay. So we're trying to see, are we going to get reals? Are we going to get? Imaginary. So yes, am I a positive or am I a negative? I'm not recording for the audio weirdo. Oh, dang. <laughs> he was really over asking, is she recording? I'm just recording for the, the writing.
<laughs> You're just so precious. So in the calculator, 85 squared, either you can write, whoa, you can write 85 times 85 or 85 squared if it has a square button. So 85 squared is 7,225. Is that what y'all got? Yeah. Okay. 7,225. And then now I'm going to multiply these numbers. So I'm going to multiply negative 4, so I press 4, make it negative, times 16, press negative, make it negative, times 114.917, and make that negative. Hit enter, and I get negative 7,354 points. Ne what was it? Negative 7.